Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much for everybody for joining. This is about the panel discussion for the how distributed and edge cloud affect the, the suppliers edge cloud solutions and products. And over here, the, the over here we are going to discuss about the edge cloud data center needs to meet strict requirements both uh, from the telco world and IT workloads. And over here, the, that kind of good example of that kind of pretty uh, uh, hard requirements on the telco world is uh, 5G virtual radio access network. And especially over there, when we talk about this uh, baseband, baseband real-time part, this virtual distributed unit, because it has like a specific requirements uh, uh, for the hardware from the layer one software acceleration point of view. Then on the IT workloads, you know that there's like this artificial intelligence and machine learning is like coming like a really strong there and there are like specific use cases. So that is bringing like a new use cases on the enterprise area. And over here, we are going to discuss now that the, all the like uh, 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 partner companies over here in this panel discussion, they have already, already like their solutions and how they need to take into account uh, when their solution needs to meet also like these, these requirements. And our panelists, we have uh, uh, Sven Freudenfeld from Lanner. Then we have uh, 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 Kylie uh, from UFI Space, Steven Wang from Beamwin, and Mike Moore from Nokia. And my name is uh, Mark Hockren. I work as a moderator. And over here, so we, we are going to have a, a, a discussion first between panelists, and then you have like opportunity to, to send the questions of the panel discussion. And now when we start that actual like this, this panel discussion, so as a, like a starting point for the, each panelist, there's like two questions that we would like to hear your feedback. The first question is, how have you taken into account new edge cloud deployment requirements in your product and solution? And the second question is, how new use cases in the edge cloud affect your product and solution? And over here specifically on this enterprise AI and ML use cases, and then uh, this 5G VRAN as an example. So uh, Sven, could you start? Thank you. Yeah, sure. So we uh, we are an active member. Well, we are a participating member of uh, the, of OCP, and you know the background of Lana for the people who don't know Lana and details. But uh, traditionally, we came from the ODM space, right? So we building appliances primarily for enterprise uh, uh, cybersecurity and uh, and and networking. Uh, so it's a network computing company as in, in its core and its DNA. Um, we started uh, looking at the telco market about four years ago when I joined Lana initially. Um, and uh, so we have evolved uh, the whole concept of disaggregation, um, starting on the enterprise, so SD1, universal CPEs. Uh, this is really uh, ticking off. Uh, we see uh, an increase on that uh, conceptual model. Uh, model for the last two years, and now with COVID-19, we see even uh, more ramp up on that. And where, we, uh, where we're focusing on now is the next level, and we have engagements with service providers um, who are identifying the next solution for disaggregated networks. And the, the first thing in mind coming uh, at the current stage is the, <clears throat> the DU and the CU option for open run. So these are elements uh, where we uh, believe that uh, a disaggregated networking uh, infrastructure uh, <clears throat> will be uh, uh, the strategy for most of the service providers coming in uh, 21 and uh, 22. So um, we, um, um, we have been focusing on that. And then also, of course, um, we have uh, created a white box um, uh, uh, for the last uh, couple of years, which was based on a concept traditionally on some legacy architecture, which called ATCA, Advanced Communication Telecom Architecture. So we did a different spin on that, which became a, a, a sort of a modular white box uh, appliance uh, with scalable compute networking uh, as, an part for, as a part of an infrastructure. We built in 
programmable networking, meaning we uh, we eliminate the need of a top of rack switch, uh, either barefoot Tofino or Broadcom, what have you. Um, so we uh, we integ- integrated that. So our idea is that you know most of the service providers will. The challenge is the, the track role for deploying these solutions are the biggest cost burden. And now with COVID-19, everybody is moving towards a, an SDN approach, so for the fine networking. Um, and that requires some integration of networking, computing, acceleration, uh, in, encapsulated into the platform, so completely uh, integrated. Um, so we, we have uh, adopted the... Um, open edge concept, um, but uh, slightly a different way. Um, we, uh, we're fitting it in the same envelope. Um, um, and um, the, uh, the other key element what we're integrating into this is the need for uh, provision time protocol. Uh, so meaning IEEE 1588 <clears throat> at the DU site, not at the uh, disaggregated cell site, but at the DU site. So these are some of the elements that we have been uh, considering on this. Thank you, Sven. Let's continue then. Do we have a Kai already in, in a call? Uh, yes, this is Kai. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Hey. And maybe you could give like like a few your view for these two questions. What okay, we have. sure. No problem. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Kai Lee. I'm the uh, technical director for UFI Space uh, headquarter in Taiwan, and I personally work in San Jose, uh, California. Uh, just a really quick overview on the on what we do and how we fit into the specific topic that we are talking about today. Uh, our company focuses in the end-to-end uh, telco architecture from the rank all the way into the central offices. And then we have developed so, uh, end-to-end solution, including in the front hall, in the mid hall, and also the back hall and then all the way into the central offices. With respect to the edge computing uh, conversation that we have today, uh, we, the devices, the white box devices that we build is uh, incorporate into, uh, in conjunction with some of the ecosystem partner that basically they are in the, uh, uh, what we call the MEC, the mobile edge compute area. And then as we develop our equipment, let's say at the front hall in the wing, like our cell site gateway, we have incorporate uh, the solution so that we can inject edge compute uh, opportunity when, when, so that we can analyze traffic as they go from the cell tower, let's say into the cell site gateway. And then after they starting to go into the back hall, we are the, the uh, aggregation equipment and also the... Um, uh, backhaul equipment or the central office equipment, we are also applying the same uh, concept, design concept that we also can have uh, edge equipment, uh, edge compute equipment that we can inject for analytic uh, type of analysis. So in a nutshell, from end to end, from the front hall all the way to the central office, every piece of the equipment, uh, white box that we build, we have the mindset that we can partner with the mobile compute edge equipment uh, ecosystem partner that they can easily add there into our solution mm-hmm. so we can fit into this overall edge compute uh, component. So that's kind of, uh, you know, the overall architecture of the uh, uh, equipment that we build and how we partner with the ecosystem from the uh, edge computing. And then the whole concept, let me talk a little bit about the whole concept of doing all this, and uh, this might have covered by another panelist speaker. Um, you know, because we focus uh, with quite a lot of uh, different telco carrier, which they have thousands or even tens of thousands of uh, cell sites that aggregate through our cell site gateway equipment uh, into the back hall, eventually to the central office. So if you think about this, it's a very large scale with a lot of, uh, information that need to be analyzed. If we allow all those things to come all the way into the central office to do the analytic, that will have number one a lot of overhead and number two, uh, you know, burning a lot of bandwidth for things that might or might not be relevant. Uh, I want to share some statistic with you. We do work with a very large carrier in North America that has tens and thousands of uh, cell tower utilizing our equipment. And then one thing we learned is uh, turns out some of these uh, cell tower traffic coming in, 
uh, in average, if you look at them, they might be operating at about 30% utilization. So that means that's still a lot of, uh, you know, uh, idle space. If, if we send all this uh, trending and all these uh, uh, traffic information all the way to the CL without having edge computing uh, to, 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 to do the analytic, that actually will cause a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, processing and un unnecessary bandwidth uh, to send those information that might not be relevant. So that's the whole idea why uh, when we build our, in our equipment, we are injecting our edge compute uh, uh, point of access into the front hall, the mid hall, and to the back hall. And rather than just in one place, we actually trying to do the architecture in multiple places so we can collect the different type of uh, trending and different type of uh, traffic pattern, uh, you know, things in that nature. So that's kind of, you know, our whole design concept without getting into the uh, uh, specific boxes that we built. Uh, so I'll stop here if anybody has any questions or comment. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And let's continue then. Stephen, are you in a call? Yeah, hi. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is a Stephen. I'm from WeWin. Um, I'm based in San Jose covering uh, the whole um, America. So regarding to the two questions, I think, in this panel discussion, the first one is that, how have we taken into account for the new edge cloud deployment requirements into our product and solutions? And as you know, we, we are a cloud infrastructure designer and a manufacturer. And if you look back how the traditional infrastructure was made, basically design started with multiple platforms, for example, like x86 or ARM, and then start from motherboard design. We make sure good signal integrity. We make sure good power efficiency. And we, as well as we offer a proper I.O. assuring good balance between expendability and the cost. Then it is about mechanical. So we take customer's data center specific requirement into considerations, including form factors, serviceabilities, and thermal characteristics. And then after that, it was firmware perspective. We offer firmware, management console, software to assure the system will run with customer's specific application with maximum stability and have good compatibility. So all of those for traditional cloud infrastructures, it is about PCB, chassis, firmware, rack and cluster, cluster configuration. And that's pretty much about it. However, when we're actually seeing um, regarding to the new edge cloud applications, we figure out that we need to go further and beyond. So beside all what we did with the traditional cloud infrastructure, we did the following extras. Number one, we actively participated in the telecom interested open foundations. So we participate in the ONFCC programs. We also work with a couple of third-party software stack partners to port certain interesting software with our systems. For example, we're partnering with the Radisys to run the 5G software stack in the, into our edge offerings. And we're demonstrating the first 5G high-resolution video streamings on demand through the 5G edge network. In addition, we're also actively participating in various testing challenges and opportunities. And one good example is the ORAM PlugFast. So basically, we believe since the Edge is so new, it will be hard to say port everything to cover all the Edge applications. But our idea is simply port few milestone application softwares with our solutions, for our case, video on demand over Edge, could dramatically benefit customers when adopting our solutions for their edge or 5G new venues. So the second question is that how do how the new use cases in the edge cloud affect um, our products and solution enterprises re in regarding to the enterprise AI or machine learning and 5G VRAM? So there are a couple of the points actually um, affect our products and solutions. The first one is that there are there are very, very strong need for extra features, which we ha will have to consider. For example, the FEC or QAT. We will need uh, to accomplish those considerations via either onboard chip or add-on isolation car solutions. Secondary, in the 5G world, time synchronization is very important. So in our system, we have to support a precision, precision time uh, protocol or the sync e And the third one is the further energy consideration. So besides the mainstream x86, 
we have to support low power consumption platforms such as ARM. And the, the, the last one is that system has to be deployed beyond the normal data center environment. So we need to offer solutions with both highly integrated form factor, allowing multiple services running with multiple nodes in one integrated chassis, and solutions which offers more expandability, both from um, both using the add-on cards or the local storage. So in the enterprise AI and machine learning solutions, those use cases in Edge Cloud inspire us to support advanced and next generation CPU offering sufficient compute power. Our system needs to be offer PCIe design flexibility for more AI and machine learning functions. And also in our design, we actually all have offer high performance local storage via, for example, E1S, um, take into consideration from this perspective. So those are the two. Uh, the, 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 those are the points that how we actually, um, you know, change uh, how we actually participate um, in, into the 5G edge applications and the, what all those points act, affect our product design and solutions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. And let's continue with Mike. Hey, thank you, Marco. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening. Um, I really hate going last because the previous spe three speakers have really gotten all the, the key points of, of uh, the challenges in deploying to Edge. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on Nokia, we, uh, we became Platinum members in OCP back in 2015. Our focus initially then was very much on Open Rack, Open Rack version 2 which we wanted to turn into a, a telco platform. And so you know, we took that platform and we made uh, several improvements to it. We in contributed those back to Open Compute. We contributed back a, a telco optimized uh, two socket server, a, uh, a 36 OU rack, a seismic zone kit. And you know, we really admire the uh, the way that open rack was designed and the way that uh, you know as far as the tool is designed all from panel access um, you know the uh, the high efficiency of of the way that the platform is designed to optimize uh, you know processing and compute space and so about four years ago when we started taking a look at at edge compute it was really very much based on uh, moving toward a, a virtualized RAN, you know, or a cloud RAN type of architecture, and so we had some, uh, you know, some some very uh, strict requirements in place. Right? I mean, Nokia, we've been producing radio access network hardware uh, for you know 30 years now, so this is really kind of our home field, and so we very much like the open rack design, and so we wanted to take and create. A, a platform that very much leveraged the advantages of the open rack contribution. And so, you know, key of, key of that was, was bringing in NEBS, full NEBS compliance, right? So we not only went and looked at the NEBS, plat, or NEBS uh, certification documents, you know, GR63 core and 1089 core, we also went out and surveyed all of our customers, especially our tier one customers in North America, and got their edge telco equipment documentation. And we put all those together and really created a superset of requirements. And we used that superset of requirements to really drive the open edge design. And so there's the environmental concerns at the edge that we definitely need to, needed to address. There is also dimensions. You know, we wanted to create a short depth uh, rack or chassis. It's, uh, you know, we came out with is 430 millimeters deep. It's intended to be installed into a 600 millimeter rack, which is a very common rack that's deployed at the edge and the far edge. <clears throat> at the same time, we know that our customers have made a significant investment in the enclosures, you know, especially when you get out to, uh, you know, cell site locations and and dense urban regional locations. You have you know outdoor cabinets, indoor outdoor cabinets. You even have pole mount enclosures. So we took the dimensions of a standard baseband unit, you know, that is currently used used for doing RAN uh, architect or RAN applications today, 
And we really designed open edge around that dimension to allow the customer to be able to reuse the investment that they've already put into their enclosures. Right. And, you know, those investments could be, you know, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars per site that they invest to be able to house that telco equipment. So we didn't want to have them make them go back and, and uh, you know, revamp that uh, infrastructure because we were really taking a look at a, a total cost of ownership when it comes to, you know, edge cloud deployments. And then density. You know, we, we needed to make this as dense as possible because applications like virtual RAM, especially the VDU, they're very computationally intensive. They do a lot of, you know, low-level baseband processing. And the Intel processor, while it's a great processor, it doesn't, you know, it, it can't really give us the capacity that we need to justify uh, VRAN alone. And so we had to make sure that we had the power in place for accelerator cards. And that's why we put, you know, up to 400 watts for a 1U sled and, a, and 700 watts for a 2U sled. So we could take uh, additional accelerators like FPGAs, GPUs, uh, systems on a chip, you know, et cetera, to make sure that we can, you know, deploy the needed uh, compute and acceleration resources to these edge applications. And then as far as, uh, you know, the second question, uh, new use cases for Edge Cloud, how it's going to affect our production solutions, enterprise, AI, ML, et cetera. Um, there are going to be, you know, right now there's a, a, a relatively small number of accelerators that are really focused for Edge applications, right, for Edge deployments. But going forward, there's going to be a large number of different accelerators that are coming out, multiple flavors of FPGAs, ASICs, EA6, GPUs, system on a chip, and, you know, our different customers are going to be selecting different accelerators to be deployed to the edge. And while these accelerators may ultimately provide, you know, similar levels of processing, uh, you know, for specific applications, the interfaces to those are all going to be very different. <coughs> And so one of the things that we see very important is this uh, acceleration abstraction layer that is part of ORAN Working Group 6. So being able to create a common set of APIs for accelerators to really abs abstract the details of the accelerator from the application itself, I think is going to be critical going forward to deploying applications that can simply call on an acceleration resource and not necessarily have to be concerned with it being a particular, uh, you know, uh, vendor version and, and, you know, revision of silicon. And so, you know, what Nokia is, what we've also done for the edge is, is you know, we've taken this uh, open edge platform, the, the 3U chassis, the sleds, 1U and 2U sleds, and we've contributed these to the open compute projects. And so we've created uh, this ecosystem around uh, open edge. And I'm very happy that, that Stephen and we win have become part of this ecosystem because, you know, there's a saying that a rising tide lifts all boats. I really do believe the more vendors we have adopting open edge and the more vendors that we have, uh, you know, accepting that form factor, the better off we're all going to be as an OCP community. And so Nokia continues to uh, invest in open edge. We continue to, to make contributions. We're currently in the process of contributing a, a 2U chassis. We're contributing a, a, uh, a, a, a switch design that also has uh, precision timing, PTP, included in it with GPS input and double ovenized oscillator for extended holdover times. And, uh, you know, we are, we are committed to, you know, creating edge-based hardware applicate or edge-based hardware platforms. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. And thank you very much all the panelists, like, like good feedback. I would have hey, a little Marco, bit like, uh, okay. Hey, Marco, uh, this is a Steven. I want to actually chime in a little bit 
uh, because Mike actually just mentioned he hates to be the, the last one. So let me take okay. that <laughs> low from Mike. Um, I, and I want to actually say over here is that I really, really want to, you know, and then even though Mike is very humble and saying, you know, everybody already take, you know, talk about all the points, but I really want to actually shout out that this edge has been, Nokia has been playing such a very, very important role into this edge on forum and community. And then even from our WeWin perspective, um, Mike actually been a really, really good mentor and leadership um, in terms of driving the edge platforms. So I, I really want to actually give the credit and uh, give, give a shout out for Mike as well as Nokia for leading this phenomenon solutions. And I want to actually say, um, you know, um, even, even though Nokia has the very first airframe and then um, we're actually um, contributing to the second platform. And believe it or not, our, our second platform is even also inspired by Nokia and Mike's um, inspiration from the previous one. So you're actually going to soon see our second trend contribution of the edge solutions into the OCP market space. And again, I just want to actually shout out that the huge contribution and the huge phenomenon, phenomenon um, contribution and uh, from Nokia and Mike. Yeah. So. Mike, I'm actually offloading you from the last one. I will become the last one because I love to do that. Right. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Yeah, so uh, well, well, um, next question would be that, so what is this uh, uh, first use case that you, uh, your customers has required to support for your, for your Edge Cloud product and solution? <clears throat> Let's do it one by one. Shall we go in reverse order this time? No, uh, whatever order, uh, who wants to go first, please? Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and take it first. And for us, our, our, first, uh, our first primary application for uh, our Edge platform is virtualized RAN, uh, virtualized DU, virtualized CU. Uh, and you know, that involves uh, using you know, both uh, you know, fairly dense uh, Intel processors up to a 24 core is what we're currently specifying, and the use of, of uh, accelerators such as Vista Creek and the upcoming Pomona Lake card. So being able to do that layer one offload uh, in, in hardware. Uh, in, in addition to that, I would say other edge applications are starting to come from really from industrial automation, especially as it's tied into our uh, uh, private RAN or you know private LTE, private 5G offerings, being able to provide edge computing for uh, you know industrial IoT types of operations. That's another application type of application that's quickly becoming uh, kind of in the forefront of of our edge deployments. Okay, you know uh, I guess I go next. <laughs> um, so um, what we see is. Um, the initial um, trials or initial uh, use cases we've been working on is really, it's not on the open run initiative just yet, but it's on the MDU, the multi-dwelling units, where basically the edge compute platform is residing in a, in a telco closet in, a, in, a, in multiple buildings and is acting as the uh, edge compute device for, the, uh, for some of the application. Um, the... Um, uh, it would also it's also be able to leverage the uh, SDN framework, meaning uh, fully programmable networking capabilities and open programmable networking capabilities built into this platform. Again, as, a, as I mentioned, that uh, the service provider's highest cost is the track role to basically go on site and do installations and, and maintenance and so, and so forth. Um, so the whole idea here is to uses edge platform to scale. So all the way down where at one point the uh, customer can make their own provisioning. Uh, if you're familiar with the Telstra networks in, uh, in, in Australia, they have a self-provisioning networking infrastructure which is all based on SDN. Um, so that's why we, we believe a networking aspect is a, is a key element for that, including the SDN control functions and, and you know, uh, a typical use case where we've been uh, collaborating on a project is for segment, segment routing v6, SRV6. 
So when basically allows you to slice, to do network slicing right at the edge, um, and on the edge platform. Again, that's why we believe that networking is in a critical path for the edge device. Uh, network telemetry is a big element for that um, to do analytics. So we building in functions which can leverage the GPU function or RPG, as many of my uh, previous speakers have said. But um, uh, so that is also critical uh, to have it at the edge location uh, to re reduce latency um, and also to uh, optimize the networking uh, function. So when, when you, if you're familiar with the Intel Barefoot Tofino architecture, the ASIC, it introduces something called uh, inbound network telemetry, which gives you much more telemetry data than the traditional um, uh, switch fa fabric. And collecting this data and doing the analytics at the edge, that's the key part. So this is just the initial one. Um, where we have big hopes on is, um, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but the FCC is um, allocating funds for uh, something called the uh, Rural Cloud Initiative. Um, we believe that uh, Open Run will be probably the, uh, the forerunner for this uh, the rural cloud initiative. And the main reason is because it's all greenfield, right? Uh, it takes it gets quicker when we uh, traditional service provider traditional service providers need to maintain the four G and three G infrastructure in parallel to rolling out five G, for example. So, but this rural cloud initiative um, for smart farming, uh, uh, intelligent agriculture, and so on. Uh, there are a lot of pieces, which is a private 5G network, basically, uh, which require platforms which are uh, sizable for that in terms of uh, dimensions. So the open edge platform is a perfect fit uh, in these type of environments because it's, you don't have a luxury of power, cooling, uh, hot aisle, cold aisle, as a data center, you really have to be able to deploy those platforms uh, in, in that area. And then, of course, the third one, what we see is the uh, open run portion, right? So these, but in, in that element, what we need to uh, consider is the software ecosystem, because, you know, the these accelerator cards, they need uh, the secret source to actually function. Um, and it could be a GPU, could be an FPGA, but um, uh, we consider it as, again as a white box, but the, the dependency is still on the ASIC, what's been running on that, because that makes makes a difference on that. So that's how, uh, that's the uh, initial use cases what we see. Of course, there will be more coming down the pipe. Um, we have discussions with service providers who thinking about it, uh, and, and there's some potential for 2021, but I think we are just in the beginning on, on seeing these use cases for the, uh, for the edge compute devices. So who's the next? Uh, I can go next, uh, since Stephen said he would like to be last. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So one of the virtualization on the edge that we are doing is as uh, follow. Uh, as I mentioned during the introduction part, uh, we develop end-to-end -end telco solution, and we do put a lot of focuses on the uh, front hall. So if you uh, take a look at the uh, design today uh, on the front hall architecture, uh, every single RU is connected to a BBU. It's a one-to-one -one correspondent. And as I also share with some of the uh, benchmarking that we learned from working with our customer, a lot of this uh, you know, radio tower from the RU to the BBU, a lot of time they are somewhat you know, uh, underutilized, you know, we are looking at some of the uh, utilization may be doing at, uh, you know, around 30% 30, 30 if you look over like a 24 hours period. So we see some opportunity to actually, uh, to make this a lot more effective by turning a RU that tied to the antenna, talking to a pooling of the BBU by virtualizing the BBU function. And that is something that we are working on by, uh, by developing uh, the front hall gateway and also the converged access uh, switch. So, you know, this is like breaking down the traditional CP and ECP, the common public radio interfaces, and then intercept that with the uh, radio over ethernet, uh, the ROE, and then also support some of the other feature required like the low five and things like that. 
the ultimate goal is that allow us to virtualize the BBU from a one-to-one -one physical device to the RU as now becoming a BBU pooling by virtualizing it and then uh, looking at technology like DSP, digital signal processor, to process some of these uh, BBU uh, pooling function. And that kind of changed some of the whole topology today, you know, with the RU into the BBU and then into a cell site gateway router before it connect into a central office. Now we have opportunity to support multiple cell tower with the radio head into a pooling of the BBU physically sitting into the central office by bringing some of those, uh, you know, far end going towards the uh, mid hall and the back hall by virtualizing it, uh, virtualizing this, and that brings us a couple advantage. One is now we can utilize the resources a lot more effectively, and now we can kind of, you know, sharing the uh, processing and compute power to surface not just one but multiple uh, cell tower. To, uh, you know, depends on the uh, uh, traffic pattern. As uh, everybody can expect, a cell tower sitting in Alaska probably has a different utilization than a cell tower sitting in Man Manhattan, New York, or downtown San Francisco. So, so we are trying to virtualize the backend BBU pooling by better utilize some of these uh, traffic pattern and then get the most out of that. So that is uh, one of the uh, key examples that uh, we are working on, on the front hall gateway and the converged access server to allow the virtualization of the BBU on the back end. So I'll stop here for a second. Thank you. And let's Thank continue you. then with Steve. So we have like a, a few minutes left. So let's hope that we could get at least like one question from the audience then. Thank you. Sure, sure. So let me actually make it short. Um, we have multiple of the POC with the customers, but the two I want to actually point it out is the one which, which I mentioned earlier before, it's about the 5G uh, video on demand with the high resolution, uh, high, high, high re resolution uh, applications. And then with that, we're actually seeing, we're, we're actually virtualizing a lot of the things, for example, like the CUDU in the VRAM, and we're actually virtualizing the EPC and the MEC. And one of the things is that we're actually putting the, uh, the FEC card into one of our um, solutions to actually make the whole process actually smooth. Um, another application I actually want to actually point it out is that we do have a POC actually running is for the edge gaming, um, surprisingly edge gaming. And then with that, um, the edge solutions usually were seen actually an increasing demand to put in the GPU and not only one, it's multiple GPU and those are G those GPU are hot and takes a lot of power um, as well as they, uh, for the online, uh, online gaming applications, they also need a lot of the local storage. That's why we're actually having the design to actually, the mitigation is to having the design to be able to uh, fit in multiple GPU in a very, very constrained and short chassis, as just uh, Mike said, as well as the supporting a lot of E1S for local storage. Um, so I want to actually make it quick so that we have more time for the second question. Yep. Thank you very much uh, for Steven. And, and thank you very much for the panelists. So, so is there any like a questions from audience? I recall, Marco, there's about a 30 second delay between what we're doing live and what the audience is seeing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think that we have, if there's no questions, so I, I'm just thinking because we have pretty much used our over 40 minutes now. Okay. Well, I mean, I would still take a look at, you know, the, the panelists. Let's, let's continue to monitor the, the public conversation on the web portal. And, you know, we can answer any sort of questions that might come up as they, as they come along. Yes. This was really good discussion and, and open communication and good, good like, like, like feedback from different angle on the Edge Cloud. It's cloud deployment. Thank you very much for all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. And nice to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.